good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. Welcome to Consider This. This is the show where we want you to consider and then reconsider what you know of the news of the day. Returning for its second year, National Training Week 2024 is happening on the 24th to the 30th of June and offers a series of free training sessions designed to boost the skills, the skills of Malaysians. Now, this year's edition focuses on fostering a lifelong learning mindset and to help participants navigate some of the challenges of today's workforce. So joining me on the show today to discuss this further, I have um, Inchit Sofian Amin, Chief Programs Officer at Human Resource Development Corporation or H HRD Corp. And um, Puan Shuhai Batul Aslamia Hurmuzan, who is from Group Chief Human Capital Officer at Asami Bank. Thank you so much for joining me, both of you. Um, maybe I can begin with you, Inchit Sofian, and sure. you can tell me a little bit about National Training Week. Um, and also what HRD Corp's role it, it, uh, is in this um, NTW. Okay. Um, th thank you, Melissa. Um, I think in order to understand um, National Training Week, you have to understand a bit about HRD Corp. Mm. So we are an agency under Kasuma, Ministry of Human Resources. Um, we've been here for about more than 30 years. So the whole responsibility of HRD Corp is to drive um, the training of the nation. We, our, our job is to is to create a, a very strong, highly skilled Malaysian workforce. Um, over the years, um, over the 30 plus years, currently we have around 90, more than 90,000 companies registered under HRD Corp. Mm -hmm. So we, they, um, these 90,000 companies with about 5 million workers, they have access to the HRD Corp funds to train their, their staff. Um, but what we realized was that um, there are 5, 000, uh, sorry, 5 million Malaysians under HRD Corp. You probably have another um, 1.5, 1.8 million Malaysians working under the government and maybe 10 million Malaysians of a school going age mm -hmm. from, from primary to, to tertiary. So what that means is if you, if you total all that up, that's only about 16 million. So what that means is there are another 16 million more or less, half of the Malaysian population do not have access to training funds or training opportunities. And that was why we started the National Training Week. So the National Training Week, the concept is very easy. You, you, you hit it right on the head. It's basically a week... Um, where we offer free training opportunities to all Malaysians, as many Malaysians as possible. So it is an initiative under Kasuma, under the Ministry of Human Resources. HRD Corp's role is, is actually to drive this. We, we are the implementing agency. Okay. So we are the ones who actually look for organisations or, or individuals who want to offer free training. We do the pro promotional stuff. We, we, we drive events on the ground to get as many Malaysians as possible trained for free during the NTW. Okay, can you just tell me uh, what kind of training? So what kind of courses are going to be offered? Who, who are these um, 16 million that you are talking about? Who's the target audience? Who would need to leverage this opportunity? Okay, so when you talk about, basically it's for all Malaysians. So, so the target audience is, is any Malaysian of any age from, from any state, in, in, in any social status, working, non-working, whatever, this is for you. The whole idea is to offer free training opportunities for all Malaysians, regardless of, of, their, of their situation. Um, so um, that, 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 that was why we, we came up with this. Um, and, and, and I think um, when, when we talk about free training, HRD Corp, we do not offer that training. Okay. So that training is actually offered by, by our partners. Um, we started this last year and, and we've seen an, 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 an increase in the sense that the training is actually offered by, of course, Organizations that are traditionally involved in training, mm. your training providers, your universities, your colleges, they are in. But at the same time, we are also looking at corporates giving free training. We are, all, we are also looking at NGOs giving free training. We are also looking at um, individuals giving free training. So we, we provide the platform for Malaysians to share knowledge with Malaysians. So anybody can offer free training to anybody. And when you talk about what type of training, it covers the whole gambit. Because okay. the idea of, of, of National Training Week is actually to inculcate lifelong learning. So while, if you look at it, we actually split um, what we tried to be this year, we tried to be a bit more focused. So we actually introduced five pillars. Okay. So all the courses um, offered under um, National Training Week will be aligned to one of these five pillars, which are basically life skills, so future skills. Life skills, future skills. Correct. Creativity, creativity and innovation, innovation. financial, uh, sustainable development. So financial literacy and sustainable development. development okay. Correct. I want to come back to these five pillars, but I'm going to bring you in, uh, Puan Shu. When you hear Encik Sufian talk about these five pillars, uh, life skills, future skills, creativity, innovation, financial literacy, sustainable development, how does that, um, is that in line with what you see as the 
uh, what, what industry needs. Okay, thank you, Melissa. All right. Uh, yes, definitely. All right. Uh, what NGW 2024 focus on now, I would say that really resonate to what is actually required for the industry. Basically, we are managing the handling the SMEs where they are contribute significantly contribute to the nation. Yeah, it's the right. backbone of the Malaysian Correct. economy. Yes, yeah. you know, uh, we have seen uh, uh, increasing number of SME after the COVID. I think there's a lot of people that left job and start to do their own business where required. I would say that a lot of this coaching and also a guidance in terms of how to run business. So in SME Bank, besides focusing on our staff, talking about lifelong learning, you know, <laughs> we definitely making sure that our people equipped with the right skill set to support the, the bank and also our client. We also have a subsidiaries focusing pretty much on entrepreneur training we call SEDA, which actually center of entrepreneur development and research. So this is where we want to make sure that it's not only our employee equipped with the right skill, mm. our client is also equipped with the right skill because it needs to be holistic. Mm. So you cannot focus on your employee, but you left your <laughs> client. So it has to be together. Right. So this NTW 2034, I would say that is actually a right move by HRDC to ensure we encourage you know, the whole nation looking at development, hungry for knowledge, you know, acquire new skill. It's nothing else that to be competitive and to attract more foreign direct investment right. to the country. With, yeah. with the areas that we're talking about, the areas of skills that we want to focus on, um, talk to me about why these particular areas were chosen. I would like to hear also from you, Puanshu, how you see that those um, skills being implemented in kind of real, li real world industry needs. Uh, I think, I think if, if when, when you look at the five pillars, um, in the first place, um, these pillars, were, were, we came up with these pillars based on consultation with, with the industry. Okay. We did this right after NTW 2023. Okay, so that so, finished first and then you went straight into the yes, next correct, year's event. Yes, we, we, we've been planning this for quite some time. So I think um, what, what came up at the time was we were trying to look at what were the important things that was, imp that was critical to the nation. Mm. So that, that's how we came up with, with especially um, future skills as well as sustainable development. Mm. Because these are things that, that, that are required to drive the country what, forward. What exactly does future skills entail? If, if, you were looked, if you were to look into the courses that are offered under future skills, so you are looking at um, skills that are required now and forward. So some of the typical courses available under future skills would include um, generative AI, it would include um, um, drone technology, um, IT courses, IT certification courses, um, STEM courses. There are even TVET um, courses available under Future Skills. So you're looking at um, skills that are required for the current generation moving forward to drive the industry. I mean, if you if you if you look at the government's aspiration nowadays, the the, the industrial master plan, mm -hmm. um, the the um, NETA and things like that, these are very much in line with those aspirations. Right. And, and I have to be clear, these are all free training sessions. Yes, totally free. What's the catch? <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask. There's no such thing as a free lunch. But what, so, so they're free, are they online, are they in person? Tell me more, how, how okay. are these courses so conducted? If, if, if you were to look at where we are today, currently, as of now, there are more than 32,000 courses already being offered. For, from now until the end of the National Training Week, the end of June. So um, it, it, it covers, um, the, um, if, if you were to look at the 32,000, um, about 2,000 of those courses are actually classroom. So, so you actually have to go to a class oh, okay. and, and then. About um, around another 2,000 is actually online. So it's, there is an instructor teaching, but it's online. And the bulk of it, a lot of it is actually um, self-paced. So, so um, e-learning content right. that you can, you can consume at your own time. So, I mean, if, if you were to talk about um, lifelong learning, yeah, I think yeah. one of the most flexible and convenient ways to learn is actually self-paced. So Definitely. The why of it is, and, and I've spoken to a lot of trainers, I mean, these organizations that offer, um, the easiest way to answer this would basically be altruistic reasons. Yeah. Um, national service national for service. the good of the nation. A lot of them are doing it that way. But I think what I learned is that 
when you give freely, you tend to receive. So a lot, and while a lot of them are doing it from the goodness of their heart, um, it also helps to build the profiles of organization. It also helps to build the profiles of, of trainers um, for their own betterment in terms of, of, of their, their, um, their career, yeah. in terms of their profession. So it's, it's that, that's what they're doing it for. Basically, yeah. it's, 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 it's for altruistic reasons, it, but at the same time... But it's also a platform for correct, them, right? Correct, it's also a platform yeah. for it's them. It's a right? national platform yes. for them. It's quite an amazing opportunity. Um, Puan Chu, when you think about these skills, how does that apply to your staff, your clientele? Um, will they benefit from these skills? Of course, certainly. Because you know, uh, we want to inculcate in terms of lifelong learning yeah. for everybody. So it's talking about nation. So I would say that NTW 2024, everybody should actually grab it. Mm -hmm. You know, and actually, you know, embrace it and want it to be, hopefully, NTW can continue for the years to come <laughs> and it can become an annual event, right? To encourage people focusing on lifelong learning. That is most, most important. Mm -hmm. We do not want people to think that after I graduated, that's it. I already have my degree, that's it. No, there's still a lot more to learn mm -hmm. because the ecosystem changed. You know, the competitiveness and also how are we going to position? How is Malaysian will have their value proposition to actually attract investors to come to Malaysia? Mm. So it's all about how competitive and how you have that workforce with the right skill set that you can offer mm. for all the investors. So it's very important. Do you, do you find it... Um, have you... Have, has there been encouraging... Uh, reception of this idea of lifelong learning amongst SME um, bank employees. I mean, how do, how do how do you go about fostering that? Because a lot of people think, oh, you know, you've got the credentials, you've got the job already. What do I need to continue with these kind of micro credentials for? How do you communicate that to your people? Yeah, we have a dedicated team that looking at we call people development mm -hmm. team who focusing on our workforce skill set. We do gap analysis and how we do gap analysis depends on what actually the industry required oh. compared to what we have now. So we do that on annual basis to make sure that, and of course with HRDC around, make things much easier for us because I can see that things have evolved. HRDC have a lot of qualified training providers mm -hmm. where we have option across industries you know, like for our client as well, you know, we have come from different industry, from hospi hospitality, manufacturing, maybe oil and gas as well. So basically, HRDC covered all industry that give, a, I would say, a plus point for us. Mm. And how we inculcate this learning in our company is where we make sure that people know what it takes for them to progress. Mm. You know, like you need to be on certification in order for you to get X job. Mm. You know, basically we put at the, there will be some kind of criteria for people to progress and it goes through learning. So that's how we make sure that people know that they must continue the, regardless how many years of experience. Things evolve outside that you have to evolve accordingly, <laughs> do you, right? Do you find yeah. that you need to incentivize um, people to continue learning or is it is it something that is kind of personally driven? Okay, honestly... In the beginning, it's a bit tough because people will say that they are busy with their work. Yeah. Yeah, they cannot go away for two, three days and the bosses will not allow them to go, be away. You know, This is normal. But now with this, uh, I would say the access to the system, remote work, right. you know, so it doesn't matter. We can plan mm. and we can do accordingly. But the most important, when we run a training program, we actually concurrently work with the rest of the division to make sure that everybody agreed to it. Right. And when all division committed to this, we make things done. Yeah. So it's not about human resource department promoting a training, but is the whole overall company yeah. is actually agreed yeah. that we need to equip our people. And lifelong learning, yes. uh, the, that mindset has to be adopted by everyone in the company, yes. right? From from the bottom all the way up to the top. Yeah. And as Inchit Sofian said, it's kind of own pace learning also allows for working people to um, get new credentials to upskill. Yeah? Cool. All right, we're going to take a quick break here on Consider This. We will be back with more. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hi 
Hi, welcome back to Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris. I'm speaking today to Encik Sofian Amin from HRD Corp, or Human Resource Development Corporation, and also Puan Shohaibatul Aslamia Hurmuzan from SME Bank. We're discussing National Training Week 2024, which is back for its second edition this year on the 24th of June until the 30th of June. And I wanted to talk to Encik Sofian about um, com the comparison of last year's uh, National Training Week and what lessons were learnt from um, that edition, how this year might have, uh, what lessons you took to improve this year's edition? Um, last year's National Training Week was actually a very interesting story because oh. <laughs> we did it in a very, very short time. I, I remember from, 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 um, from the idea till the implementation was only something like 10 weeks. Oh. That, that was what we did last year. So, as, as, um, as is usual for things that, that, that come very quickly, um, we, didn't have a, we didn't have a lot of time to, to plan what we wanted to do with it, mm. which was why we started this year's um, iteration <laughs> immediately once, once we have uh, finished off to National Training Week 2023. So, the, um, this year what we are looking is, of course, we want the higher numbers. So, last year we, we, we trained um, around 129,000 Malaysians actually got free training. This year we are looking at, at, at 200,000 and beyond. Of course, the numbers are bigger. But at the same time, we, we also took the time to, to, to source for uh, more relevant uh, and, and, and more high value courses. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we also look to drive, that's, that's why we have those five pillars. So it's not just about free training. Last year it was just about free training. You just come for training, you get trained for free. This year we wanted it to have a bit more impact and, and for the courses to actually uh, mean something. Because I, I remember, uh, this stays with me, something that, that our minister mentioned, uh, YB Stevenson. He always says, when you go for training, it should change your life. So it's not just about going for training. That training needs to improve you mm -hmm. or, hence, or enhance you in some way. Okay. So that was what we were So how, how do you do that? How do you measure um, the impact of training sessions on participants? So typically, um, if you were to look at it from an academic point of view, there, there is a very, um, very established mechanism for all of this. Um, it's called the, the assessment uh, evaluation of, of training effectiveness. Mm -hmm. So we are using the same mechanism, but what we are trying to do is we're trying to make it as, as easy as possible. So for example, um, in order to participate in National Training Week, go to our portal, sign up for the courses and all of that. But once you have completed those courses, there are actually follow-up um, evaluations and assessments done online so that we can collect data regarding the effectiveness of those mm. courses. And, and it's, it's something that, that we are starting. We, we have always done this for the longest time for all of our other training that, that we have done outside of NTW. But this is the first time we are doing it fully digital. And, and, and it's sort of like a pilot uh, pilot project test case. If it works out well, then we will implement this through the rest of our offerings. Okay. So you're talking about the moment you finish a training, pick up your phone, scan a QR code, put in um, the complete your evaluation, yeah. and we will have real time data on on the effectiveness of the training across the board. Which will inform you for future training. Not, not only us. It will allow us to help our. Um, all of the companies that, that are paying levy and sending their people for training, we, it, we can help them make more informed decisions mm -hmm. when they send their staff for training, which is the better program, which is the better trainer, things like that. Excellent. But Puanshu, when you think about um, the impact training has had, upskilling has had on not just your staff, but also SME Bank's clients, what strikes you as why it's important to continue the, the lifelong learning? <clears throat> we mirror what Chit Sufian just mentioned. Mm -hmm. We do pre and post evaluation uh -huh. as well. So basically, the pre evaluation will be more on identifying the gaps and making sure we focus on what we, it really matters to us. So at the end of the day, the post evaluation will go on the impact, the outcome. You know, so we monitor closely. We want to make sure that year on year that we can see in terms of the index the customer service index, for example, and also in terms of people progress, in terms of internal promotion. So we can see there is an impact outcome to the individual that work with us, as well as we can see the progress of our clients in terms of their businesses based on what they have actually acquired, the skill, and also what they have learned throughout the program that we have. Right. So basically, it's all about the pre and post evaluation, yeah. and you continuously review it, make sure that it's actually reflect to what your mandated role as SME Bank, mandated role, 
to serve the underserved and unserved you know so basically we have very clear mm. objective we know what we need to do and we continuously improving from time well, to time. Well, that data itself serves as an incentive for mm -hmm. anyone who's thinking about upskilling, right? Yes. There is a clear measurable impact. Mm -hmm. um, and just to come back to that point about making sure that you're reaching all communities, underserved communities included, how, how is um, HRD Corp thinking about ensuring that National Training Week is um, inclusive and it's not just kind of KL, uh, Klang Valley centric, but also uh, includes other communities that may very well need the upskilling and the uh, extra training as well. well for one thing, um, HRD Corp now, we, we, we are a bit bigger than we used to be. So we do have regional offices all over the place um, in all the regions. So our region, uh, actually, um, the, the regional offices are really working hard to, to reach out. So we, we do it two ways. One, one is geographically, of course. Um, we have this regional to to, to go into as, as far as possible. Let me give you an example. The week before National Training Week, we will actually have a program in, in Kapit Miri. So that, that is, is quite far from, from KL. <laughs> that is geographical. <laughs> At the same time, we also reach out to associations, uh, mm -hmm. we, we reach out to NGOs, so that we can make sure that we do not leave any particular underserved or, or unserved communities. So we try to have courses on, on top of the normal scaling, and you know, that, that's normal. Mm -hmm. We are also looking at, at uh, persons with disabilities. Mm. We're also looking at, at, at retirees, people who have left the workforce. Or, or, or um, one, one, I remember one very, very, uh, very energetic and, and, and enthusiastic training provider last year actually drove us to do programs for um, career transition, people who are actually looking to come back into, into the workforce. So, so we do it two ways, either geographically or through uh, collaborations with, with, with different organizations to, to see that we can reach out um, as, as widely as possible. Look out to the through um, during that national training week, um, we will be of course um, giving more information as we go along. There will be specific uh, courses, there will be specific activities and programs that target very um, specific um, demographics and, 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 and communities. Right. Okay. Well, in, in the couple of minutes that we have left, I want to ask the both of you um, because of your work in kind of the learning and development ecosystem and what you are seeing as um, current and future changes and, and challenges and threats to the, the Malaysian workforce. What is the long-term vision here? National Training Week is wonderful, but it is one week. And the idea is to inculcate this learning, this love for lifelong learning, continuous learning. What would be your uh, vision, long-term vision, for how we can improve the Malaysian workforce for the long term? I'm going to uh, start with you, Puan Chu. Okay. For SME Bank, we already started collaborate with local universities. All right, so we actually partner with local universities, looking at reviewing their curriculum, their syllabus that they taught all the students. So for a start, we just have to make sure that we give back to the academician into what actually matters for future. Mm -hmm. And we also in the committee looking at future skills together with the central bank. So we partner with quite a number of local organisations to ensure that we contribute our part you know, for nation building. Right. So basically, I would say that our collaboration with local university really, really important and we have signed few MOUs as well uh, with a local university to help them to give our feedback in terms of what they really need to put in the syllabus yeah. and also exposure and training required for the student before they actually graduated. Yeah. So we do that. Okay. Yeah. And just so when you said at the beginning of our conversation, HRD Corp is essentially training the Malaysian workforce. <laughs> what is the long-term vision for the Malaysian workforce in, uh, you know, given all the threats that we see I today? I think um, it's important to note that um, skilling, education, um, and all of that, the, the mechanisms are changing. The, mm. the, the way we are doing things are changing. And, and it is why, why everybody talks about lifelong learning now. I think it's important that we put the decision and the responsibility to upskill a person in that person's hands. Okay. So that is what lifelong learning is all about. Mm. Yes, the opportunities will be there. Yes, companies will send their people for training. But Malaysians by themselves need to have that drive that I want to improve myself in these areas. Mm. So what National Training Week does is, we, 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 we give them the opportunity, we give them the access, we give them the realisation that there are opportunities and access to, to all sorts of um, 
initiatives, um, opportunities to 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 upskill, to to improve, enhance yourselves. You just need to go out and get it. So the long term vision is we want to create um, a generation, or, or we want to create Malaysians who actually take this this um, responsibility upon themselves to go out and look for information, to go out and look for knowledge and skills to improve themselves without the need of somebody else driving right. them towards it. Because Info, the availability of information is very flexible now. It's, it's, yes. it's not, not like you have to sit through a four-year university <laughs> degree anymore. Absolutely. <laughs> it can come to you when you want it. Sure. And for the many of us at home thinking about, you know, wanting to participate in this, take advantage of free training sessions, what do we need to do? Okay. Um, three things, basically. Uh, number one, we do have a website, um, nationaltrainingweek.gov.my where all, I, I mentioned 32,000 courses, it could be much more by the time we get to National <laughs> Training Week, but all of that is there. So um, log in to that website, um, please take advantage of all the courses available, sign up for as many as you can, um, that's one. Second thing, if, if you as an individual organisation, there is something that you would like to offer to other Malaysians, you can also register at that portal um, in order to, as a course provider, to actually provide training. And thirdly, uh, 29th and 30th of, of June, we're going to end this all with a bang, uh, with, with a huge, um, we call it, a, um, it's, it's, it's a closing uh, ceremony. Um, it will be officiated by, by the Yang Ahmad Bohormat, uh, Prime Minister of Malaysia. That will be on the 30th. But the 29th and 30th, we will, we will be having all sorts of activities in Bukit Jalil um, around these five pillars, around um, lifelong learning and, and the opportunities to, 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 to get training and, and, and to learn for free. Mm -hmm. So please... Um, sign up to the portal, register for courses, and make your way to Bukit Jalil on the 29th or 30th. Um, of this yeah. opportunity does not come often. Yeah. I think we shouldn't, we shouldn't miss it. Well, thank you both for being on the show and highlighting these uh, opportunities at the end of the month. Thank you for your time. Thank Appreciate you. it. That's all we have for you on this episode of Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris, signing off for the evening. Thank you so much for watching, and good night.